Boom. All right, and we are live. Welcome back uh, to Tavern Talk, our weekly community talk with our amazing community from Valis Corpus. And tonight, the ladies are taking over. So, woo! We're better than the boys anyway, it's fine. <laughs> So a lot of these faces I know that the community talk has not seen before, so we'll go around and do some introductions. I'm Stephanie. I am the background to most of these one shots, most of the D&D uh, &D stuff, and the new shopkeeper that we just announced, which everyone's been really big into lately. Uh, so Claire, why don't you introduce yourself and introduce the character that you've been using so far? Oh, fun times. I'm no longer using her. <laughs> Uh, I am, I'm Claire. I've been here, what, like three weeks at this point? Mm -hmm. And you're streaming Resident Evil Village. Oh, yes. No, for some reason, <laughs> it will not change it, even though I changed it. So I don't know why it's being weird like that. But it says okay. it's in the right category, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been playing D&D for, this will be my 21st year. That's amazing. And, yeah. It's been forever. I still have that character sheet buried somewhere in my closet. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing, well, I was playing. I am no longer playing Jesse, the transgender wood elf, who, who had the best accent of them all. That was my favorite accent. I loved that <laughs> so much. <laughs> I do. I love her accent. I like that I went, oh shit, 15 minutes before session and went, I need an accent. Time to practice. <laughs> Oh, the second you came out with that, I was like, this is it. This is it. This is all I've ever wanted in life. Sadly, she is. She is in the PC graveyard now. We we had a great eulogy for our fallen members of that session. That was that was a great time. And your new character, I believe. I don't remember the name. Your new character's name. Allie. Yeah. Allie. Very cool. So I'm excited to see what she gets up to. Um, Amanda has a level four character, which means she has survived quite a few one shots. Why don't you go Barely. ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> um, I'm Amanda. I play Mia, who is a wood elf, druid ranger. I did multi-class. I have two levels in each. Um, I've been playing officially since last year. Um, I played in one game and then these guys adopted me and, um, Isaiah adopted me before and got to play a lot of one shots since then. Um, and then my character actually, like her voice came right in her first session. Like, I didn't know how she was going to talk until like, D like Dylan started talking and I just like copied his accent on accident <laughs> and <laughs> so that's literally how her voice came to be that's amazing i love that <laughs> and sydney you are one of our newer players and i think you're one of the newer players uh from covid right so introduce yourself mm -hmm. tell us about your character all right so my name is sydney i've been on this server for about a month i think almost a month exactly um so I play uh, Rika. She is a half elf uh, rogue. Um, I've been playing D and D since January of this year, actually. So it's been only a couple months. So I'm still kind of learning, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to keep playing. That's so awesome. It's crazy to think that we have so many ranges of experience in this channel. And I think it's so cool that we can have, you know, people that have been playing for 20 years and people that have been playing for six months come together. I think that's been really awesome. Um, and I know that we talked a lot about our first community to talk about what D and D is to us and what it's brought to us. And we got to have some really interesting conversations about that. Uh, for me, I mean, it was a way to meet people in college. I didn't know anybody. Uh, I'm kind of a big nerd. I, I know to a lot of people, I seem very uh, outgoing and introverted and in your face, but I'm also home in a onesie in my comfort zone. <laughs> the second I leave my house, it's kind of a different situation. 
Um, and I got into D&D about 15 years ago now. You know, I, I loved it. We were literally playing around a campfire, dressed up in costume in the woods. Like, that was my first entrance into D&D. And it was so cool. It was a long time ago when 3.5 was the big thing. I'm new to 5e. I just got into 5e in this past year. So I'm completely new to it. This is all new to me, too. Um, and it's been great. It's been amazing to have something available that I can get creative with. I can get into character. I can have fun with all these people that I grow to love. I mean, even this community has grown into something super big and super close. Um, but for me, it wasn't always easy. I mean, I, I remember I had a lot of uh, groups that didn't want me to join because I was a girl and they thought that I couldn't understand what was going on or I wouldn't get it. And I was like, it was really interesting to feel like the one time I tried to like get out there and get out of my shell that like people were still really weird about girls being in the nerd community 15 years ago. And it's been amazing for me to see the change now, because I know Sydney, you know, you're very new to D&D &D and you haven't had any of these problems, right? Mm -mm. Yeah, you no, have a really haven't. good community because you're, you got into it in college, right? Yep, freshman year of college. Yeah, so tell us about that experience, how you got into D&D &D and what that experience has been like for you. Okay, so um, I have uh, one of my friends from college, he is a DM for D&D &D, and he runs campaigns for our friend group. Um, he has an A team and recently uh, he started a B team campaign as well. Um, and he asked if I wanted to join his, uh, one of his teams and I said yes. And then one of my friends who was also getting into one of his teams had a campaign that she'd been playing since the uh, previous semester and asked if I wanted to join that one as well. So I've been playing in two campaigns during college and I've kept going with that, uh, these past few weeks I've been home. That's super, super cool. Um, it's really interesting to hear that so many more people are getting into it. I know COVID was really big into oh, helping yeah. get into people for D and D, right? Because I think Amanda, you basically almost exclusively played online, right? Yeah, I've exclusively played online. My group was supposed to start in person, um, my first group, and then they uh, they like COVID hit, yeah, and like we were really excited about starting a new like our first session. And so the DM decided to like try it online and um, he tried to find the best like server to be able to do it online. And we did it through Facebook Messenger. There you go. And he's like, yeah. yeah. And like we actually rolled our own dice like on our table and everything. And um, I had all my books surrounding me. Mind you, we were playing Pathfinder, so it wasn't actual D&D. It was like more like 3.5. Gotcha. And um, yeah, he's like, no, we'll wait and do our next session in person. And then later on, he told me that, oh, yeah, now you're level three. Like we were level one and nearly dying. And now we're level three. Hey, so no. that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then like I joined uh, or I joined the Facebook, my D&D &D group. And then um, Isaiah found me. And he was like, hey, I have an open spot. Why don't you come join my group? And I was like, okay. And then he's like, hey, why don't you join this group of like all exclusive one shots? And it's really great. And you'll love the DM. And I'm like, okay. So <laughs> like, <laughs> it's been a crazy few months. Oh, I'm sure. And trying to learn all the new stuff, because that's been the biggest thing for me is I exclusively played in person until just recently. This was my first like online, like D&D &D. Uh, I mean, I did text role play back in the day, you know, when Neopets was the big thing, right? And Gaia yeah. online and all that stuff. So role play wasn't necessarily difficult for me for online was, was interesting. Do you, Claire, do you have like a time when you like switched from in person to online or was it kind of a mix of both for you? I mean, in the last, I guess it's been three years now, I was playing a good mix of online and in person, you know, with the group that lasted, my group that lasted for 12 years. And then we all just kind of moved online and kind of fell apart after that. Oh, good. 
goodness, that's 12 yeah. years? That's crazy. Yeah. We started in elementary school. Wow. That is so Whoa. cool. <laughs> so I but, know that you have a lot of experience in D&D. Why don't you tell us about your experience and what it's been like over the past now 20 years? Well, the first 17 years were great. It was my <laughs> friend group of six people. Uh, you know, we met once a, at minimum once a week, sometimes every day. Well, and then yeah, we played a lot. And it, they were never short sessions either. You know, it was always five plus hours. <laughs> oh, goodness. It was a, it was a full-time job. <laughs> um, and then, well, see, I, I joined a I was just looking for new groups to play something. And this time in 2019, I got, I got to like remember all my surgeries. And yeah, I joined it just after that one. Uh, I joined this group and they were great. And then this time last year, after doing a lot of self-searching while I had nothing else better to do, I came out as transgender and... They were some of the first people to know, and immediately after that, I was almost banished from that group. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then I, I left on my own accord. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I didn't leave a good taste in many people's mouths after that. And I'm not ashamed of that. I you shouldn't let be. them have it. <laughs> you shouldn't be. Absolutely <laughs> and, not. And then I found another, another good group. Um, they were still looking for a couple extra games. Found Isaiah like we all did. <laughs> uh, played a little bit with him, and now I'm in this one. That's really, you know, the, the, the part of the community that's really hard to deal with sometimes. Um, and you would think, I feel like, after all this time, because I did a professional gaming in college. It's how I paid for my college. Uh, and a lot of those competitive games, you don't talk. Because if you talk, you are going to get slammed as a female. People said the harshest things. And it's crazy for me after 10 years, because I did that 10 years ago, that there are still people that are so not accepting. And mm -hmm. I'll say, I'm really sorry you had to go through that because that's not right. And that's not okay. And I hope you feel welcomed and loved here because we love having you here. And your creativity <laughs> is phenomenal and your role playing is absolutely top notch. Like, <laughs> that's what 20 years of experience gives you. <laughs> Zero lessons, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this kind of thing is, you know, the more you do it, the, the more you get into it, the more comfortable you get. Because, I mean, even. With Sydney right out the gate, you know, your first session was, I think, our first run of our horror one shot, right? When we were, mm -hmm. were trying that out. And um, I was very impressed. I'm always very impressed with every single person that gets in because I'm like, wow, they're really good. And this is so cool. And like, we get way too into it because um, one of the biggest highlights for the week, if you guys watched the rerun the third rerun of Murder on the Lark, was our new player, Valentino, was psh, incredible. Smelling of deli meat and his whole Italian <laughs> accent, Boston, it was so cool. And I love that our community has made it so that we can like get together with these players that are so good and meet you guys. Uh, what's been uh, your favorite part of this community. Claire, you can go first. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just like that I can hop into voice chat and you know, six people show up. <laughs> yes. That's been really cool. I mean, even today we were just all hanging out, playing games and talking to each other. And that was really, really cool. What about you, Mia? That was fun. I'm gonna keep calling you Mia. I'm so sorry, everybody. Her first character, her name's Mia, and that's what I know her as. I still know <laughs> Yeti is Yeti. Oh yeah. <laughs> you'll you'll hear a slip up and call me Elrin all the time. <laughs> yeah, I will probably end up calling you Jesse just out of like habit. <laughs> and I'll accept it because my name has not legally been changed yet. <laughs> there you go. Alrighty. Maybe that'll end up being your name. Um 
I loved how consistent you guys play. Like, um, I know we have a week off next week, but like, I, I love how it's been like every week we get to play and I get that like, just burst of adrenaline and therapy all in one. And, or at least that therapy feeling. And that's definitely my favorite part is the consistent games. I was just thinking about that today, how it is nice that there's consistency. Because I think in a lot of D&D, it's hard to find consistency. Like you'll plan a mm-hmm. campaign, you'll plan something, and then you miss a week or something no, happens. No, I've, I've got like six campaigns in my back pocket right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You need a campaign? Well, roll a dice. I'll tell you which one you're playing. <laughs> hey, there you go. Oh my gosh, I would love a girl campaign. Just get all the girls together. That would yeah. be a bunch of chaos. Ooh, yes. <laughs> And Sydney, yes. since it seems like you play a lot in person, how has it been playing like with us and our one shots online? Okay, so I didn't do online until coming to Valis Corpus. Um, I was completely in person. We would steal a room, either a classroom in one of our school buildings or one of our community buildings. We would come in and we'd snatch a, a meeting room or something and we would set up our D&D, get our dice out, and we would just be chaotic for four hours <laughs> or even five hours if the if it was if the buildings were open until 1 a.m. There this you is go. how I spent my college. <laughs> um Study for exams? No. Play D&D until 1 a.m. We have our priorities. Absolutely. Absolutely. At least you'll eat the math test that way. It's probably the only math I know how to do. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're muted. Uh, No, my screen just froze for a second. Sorry. Oh, no. (laughs) Discord's been being weird for, like, everyone today. It's been really weird. They had a weird update. I'm not getting any notifications. I'm not getting notifications yeah. either. Discord needs to get Me itself neither. together. It looks like we have a chat question, and I think this is directed towards Claire because she uh, mentioned campaigns. Multi-campaign stuff seems like a big trend. Is that hard to deal with or manage? So I think it means, you know, in terms of like, if you're running campaigns or even in campaigns, because Sydney, you said you're in two, right? And Claire, mm-hmm. I'm sure you're, <laughs> I'm sure you got <laughs> lots of ideas. So is that hard to like manage as a player and a DM? Like running more than one, yes. Playing in more than one, no. Um, running one and playing in one, not hard. Play, playing's the easy stuff. Yeah, it's the the DM where I have a notebook full of stuff and I need to remember which campaign was on what page. <laughs> yeah, we had a big conversation last week with uh, you know our mods. And most of them are DMs, and we talked a lot about the struggles and how difficult DMing actually is, and then what it really entails. And you know, applaud to anybody that can do it because I I can't. Yes. I can't even talk right half the time. (laughs) (laughs) And y'all guys have seen all my typos, so don't even get me started on trying to take notes. (laughs) And Sydney, you're playing in multiple... Oh, I know, exactly. I don't... I ask Dylan about the names of his characters all the time, and he gets so mad at me. He's like, I've introduced them four times. What do you mean? I was like, I'm sorry. I really sorry. I don't know. (laughs) I need spelling. (laughs) I do. Can you write that out for me in six different (laughs) spots? Yes. I need tattoo it on my forearm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really cool getting to know a lot of uh, the females of D&D through our group. I feel like we've got a really good group. And I know um, I know that a lot of people have said that they haven't found it hard to find other females in the D&D world, other women. Uh, I have found it extraordinarily difficult. Like when I'm looking mm-hmm. for groups or, or trying to find in person and stuff like that, I'm nine times out of 10, the only the only woman there. Uh, and it's been so cool to like finally be in a place, thank God for Facebook now, you know, and, <laughs> and Discord and everything else uh, to not be the only female there. And um, I remember in our Proterran campaign, long before we started the Discord, uh, 
our my other female that was in that with me, Gigi, me and her like instantly like hit it off and like our characters literally became like the old ladies in their eighties that never, you know, separated and that are probably lesbians, but they don't ever say it, but they just are married. Uh, that's what their characters became and they were so much fun. Um, and I loved that. So I love seeing all of you guys here and building each up and seeing such a good variety and diversity of people. Because not only do we have different, you know, genders and we have different races and different cultures here, we all love the same thing. And I love that we're so open and accepting here because that can be really, really hard to find in this community. And very patient too. I mean, I, w I will say the only thing we do love is the click clack math rocks. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love my clicky clacky rocks. I get so that that's the yes. one downside to like like online role play is I can't roll my dice. <laughs> Although oh, no. Beyond is nice for that too, because like um, with a lot of the books that have been released and everything, like um, they come with sets of dice. And you can choose which ones you want to use for that day, and they'll like roll across your screen. <laughs> so that gives me the kind of satisfaction, but it's still not as nice as rolling my pretty dice. That's a really, really good question. So we got a new question from the chat from Ace saying, for those in the group that don't DM, what obstacles have you come across that stop you from being able to DM? So Claire, you do. Did you oh, yeah. find it hard to get into that? No, one day I said, screw it, I'm DMing a campaign. There you go. <laughs> Who wants it? <laughs> so you were full gung-ho. For me, I just, I don't, I don't know. I think, I, I think I'm scared. You know, I, I know it's a lot of work and I helped Dylan come up with a lot of his stuff. Uh, but it's not like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm good enough. I really, I really don't. <laughs> I hear you. You're, you're would so be. good at role playing. I, I don't know. I just I just feel like I wouldn't have as good of an like I feel like I've had such amazing DMs and I'm so worried that I would like be really shitty. <laughs> well, like usually your first time is supposed to be like a lot like that. <laughs> but like as you get into it more, like I guess you get better and like more confident. Um I know for me personally, it's that I have all these ideas. It's just hard to write them down and articulate them. Right. Because I have an idea for a campaign, but I have no idea where it's going. Mm -hmm. I can start it, but it's just like, you know, the first paragraph and that's it. Right. What about you? Have you ever considered DMing, Sydney? Um, no, I haven't. I... Uh, Right now, definitely don't have time. That's like my one problem is like, I work full time, like as I'm home, I'm working 11 hour days. So like, there's no time to commit to a day. And like, I have a hard time committing as a player too. Like this week, I completely skipped playing a one shot here on the server just because I was working. So I couldn't get home in time to play. So I was like, me. And then a few of my other campaigns, I've had to skip days due to work. So, um, like, with work and school, there's just no way I could DM a campaign because I'd feel really bad if I got a campaign together and I was like, sorry, guys, got to work today and no D&D. &D. Right. And timing can be hard. Timing can be really hard. And I think, mm -hmm. um, I think that can be really hard, too, because we got on the conversation, you know, anytime we hop into the voice chat and just hang out as friends, you know we got into the conversation of like relationships and hobbies. And, you know, I've learned over the years, being almost 30 years old now, that if somebody doesn't share in my hobbies, for me, the relationship in general probably isn't going to work because my hobbies take up so much time. You know, you know, I, I work full time and then I also have to be an adult, which is so much fun. Uh, so the time <laughs> that I do have, I'm on this computer, I'm coming up with characters, I'm trying to get into campaigns. And I would hate to have like that person who like just wants to do something completely different than I do. But I'm like, no, I, I'm sorry, dude. Like I got D&D &D tonight, so <laughs> you can come play with me, you know, if you want to. 
Uh, so I think timing, timing can be really hard. Timing can be really, really hard as a player and as a DM. I definitely think to DM, you definitely need more time than I think a player would. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just yelled at by Ace saying that I should DM and that my answer was shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we do have another question. Uh, this is Kyle. If you don't guys don't know, he's a friend of ours. Thank you for jumping in, Kyle. It says, so this is kind of a generic question. What was the experience that made you fall in love with D&D? That's a really good question. Do any of you guys have like a moment that you remember that just like solidified this love of role play for you guys? My fifth birthday. <laughs> Your fifth birth. Okay, now I gotta know. Now I gotta that, know. That's when I started playing D&D. <laughs> that's all I wanted. I had no clue what it was, but I had heard my dad talking about it. And that's all I wanted. That's so cool. Did your dad like get you the books and stuff? Yep, he got me the the player's handbook, um, and that was it, really, because they were expensive at the time. Still, yeah, that is super. And, and so we you just playing. knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you my, were just then made for this, is what it was. Oh, yeah. Sydney popped up. I'm sure she'll my, be back. And then my three year old sister joined in. Oh, that's precious. That is precious. Does your sister still play? No. No. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the only one in the family who still plays. I bet she was a dice goblin. I am like, the dice goblin. But like I when know. she was three, did she like just want to play with your dice? Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So Claire was just made for this. She was born this way <laughs> and she is the D&D goddess is what we have decided now. Sydney, I know that your friends asked you to play, but was there a moment while you were playing that like solidified your love for D&D? Um, I think it was just the chaos that we all have. Um, like I play with, uh, in my main campaign, I play with two girls and a boy. Um, and then our DM is also a male. So we're a mostly female campaign and, um, we're just completely chaotic and it is totally great. Uh, we've done like this one thing we did. Um, we are the town we were in was under siege by goblins. So they we were completely surrounded on all sides, but we needed to go deliver a message. So we had to leave the town. Right. So um, we decided to break through the goblin army by me using Hail of Thorns, I'm a ranger in that uh, campaign, so I uh, used my highly overpowered bow to shoot Hail of Thorns at the goblins. They used Precedis... Uh, I can't speak English. <laughs> Precedis... You got I it. I cannot pronounce that properly. Prestidigitation. Uh, yes, that I gotta one. slow it Thank down. You. I gotta slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they created a fire dragon loud noises uh, basically like hoof beats uh and foot and uh foot noises cannons like literally we had an entire amount of noises to the point where we rolled so well that gabe was like yeah you busted through there easily like you know these there's like nine goblins dead from sydney's hail of thorns they're scared shitless from <laughs> the dragon like you know they're go you're gone you're free you're free to go goodbye and we're like yes and nobody took any damage we're good. We're out. i love so, that i can see the excitement on y'all's faces i think that's huge you know you know, we sit here and we talk about these things but when we talk about it when we talk about our experiences when Claire, you're talking about it five years old, your dad got you this book and the smile that goes on your face. Like, I love that we can tell that this is what we love and it's so much fun. All right, Amanda, come on. I know you got a good story. What's your story <laughs> that got you into D&D? Like, what's the moment? I think the moment was like when, um, like Isaiah had like, or Ace had brought me in like for his campaign and we were, like he was like, we're gonna put off the campaign for the for a few weeks. We're gonna do some one shots, and the first one shot we did was just like, um, almost like a stadium battle thing, and like so, all of us were like in this col. Oh, it was a coliseum, and we had to fight like people or like other creatures, and we were just like 
shooting off things and I was like okay this is fun and we just kept fighting and fighting and I don't know I loved it because like I got that like rush of serotonin like afterwards or whatever it is yeah and I was just I felt at peace afterwards like there's just that peace that you get after D&D that like everything feels good in the world yeah and I don't know no, I, I like, completely no. feel that. Yeah, because like for me, uh, I suffer from like a lot of mental health issues. Uh, and for me, it's one of those things where even if I'm having a bad day and they have a, we have a session tonight or something's going on and I'll be like, no, babe, I'm just I'm not in the mood today. Like it's been a bad day. And Dylan's like, babe, just try just like get in there. And afterwards, he can tell you I'm a different person, you know, you got to go in there with your friends and have fun and then you finish the one shot or you finish the session and then you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my God, I can't believe. Or you end up having a eulogy with 20 people in a voice chat that were watching on yes. the Twitch because Ace decided to do some bullshit and get everyone killed. You know, like it's, it's so good. It's so good for your mental health to get out of the world. And I think for me, that's what's huge is to be able, because that's what I, you know, growing up, I, <laughs> I said, sorry about that, by the way. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> but, you he know, did growing post up... another question too. Oh, he did. Okay, perfect. Um, so we kind of touched on this. Have any of you experimented with other forms of tabletop role play, such as Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu? How were those experiences? So I know that, Amanda, you said that you started with Pathfinder. I started, uh, I did Pathfinder, I did 3.5, um, which is still D&D. And I'm sure with all yeah. your years of experience, Claire, uh, you probably messed around <laughs> with a lot of different things. What about you, Sydney? Have you like touched on any other styles of role playing? Actually, no, I am completely new to the role, play role playing community. I like I knew what D&D &D was mm -hmm. like I had like a basic like stereotype knowledge right before. And then my friend Gabe invited me. He's my DM. He invited me to watch one of his campaigns. He's like, hey, why don't you just come watch and see what we do? I'm like, OK, the rest is history. There I'm here. <laughs> what other a tabletop role play have you tried, Claire? Uh, let's see, I've done 3.5, Pathfinder 1 and 2, AD&D &D 1, 4, mm -hmm. and 5. Which we don't talk about 4. 4 never existed. Nope. We don't talk about 4. 4 was 4 horrible. existed not even for an entire game for me. Uh, 4 was the coal you get from Santa when you're a bad person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so interesting that... Um, there are all these different styles of role play and we kind of like D and D always been like up here, right? Like there's all sorts of stuff. There is star Wars role play, the bane of my existence. Yes. Fourth edition. We don't talk about fourth edition. Um, but coming from 3.5 to five has been really difficult for me. I'm so used to 3.5 in my head and how the mechanics yeah. work and how the spells work. And then coming to 3.5, where literally you can customize, like, literally every little thing. Everything works completely different. That's why you'll, like, hear me. And I'm like, wait, why didn't this work? And somebody's like, that's not how it works in 5 edition. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. In fine. Fact, in, in fact, in 3.5, you had to declare you were drawing your sword and make a roll for it? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, 3.5. <laughs> 3.5 was like hard mode D&D. &D. Like you couldn't, you could not shoot in melee range. Like that wasn't a thing. <laughs> it's, it's so different seeing all these things. And now that all the modules, cause Ravnica just came out. Uh, and I remember Ravnica, Ravenloft. Uh, Ravenloft, that's what it was. I, I can't, yeah. you see, I don't English. Rav you guys, Ravnica's been out for a while. Ravnica's <laughs> Magic the Gathering, I don't know what I'm talking about. Ravnica's um, in D&D too. Yeah, because it's all Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> but Ravenloft just came out and I know Ravenloft from like 3.5 days. And so I think they're just like bringing it into the fifth edition, right? Isn't that what's happening? So, I, th mm -hmm. I think so. I haven't had a chance to actually fully read the book yet. Yeah, I haven't read into it. But, you know, I didn't do any of the modules. All of the D&D &D that I've ever done, all the roleplay has been completely homebrew 
have you guys had like a lot of the same experiences or have y'all done more like the pre-made campaigns and modules and stuff? I've done like homebrew stuff personally. Like I haven't done any modules, so I'd be interested to actually do a module campaign mm -hmm. or even one shot. Hey, I'm um, digging out my books. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> I've never done a module and I think it would be really cool to try it out. I've just, most of my DMs are all homebrew. And I know Curse of Strahd's huge, you know, so I've watched a little bit yeah. of Curse of Strahd and stuff like that. But I've I mean, heard a lot of Curse of Strahd. Oh, yeah. And Claire, you've got, you said six campaigns, you know, on the back burner right now. So <laughs> yeah. and they're, they're all homebrew, too, oh, each in an individual world. And but I'll, I'll, I'll steal a module and throw it in there. Yeah. Hey, I have all the modules if we ever want to play like. I can just add us to a campaign and then someone else can DM. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you're DMing. There you go. We're all doing new DM stuff. <laughs> yes. Sydney, does your does Gabe do his own homebrew stuff? I think his is a module. Um, I don't know. The, the name of his server is Thurndarcia into the Starless Night. Is that a module? I, I don't it think so. Sound it doesn't annoying. sound like one. And it probably is homebrew then, because I got no idea which is module, which is <laughs> not that I am too new for this. <laughs> it looks like we got another question. Do you guys have any favorite characters or roleplay experiences? And I will absolutely say yes. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite character, who is now taken over as the shopkeeper for Valis Scorpus. Her name is Vari Thornweaver, and she by far has been my favorite character of all time because she is a 237-year-old elf that has lived in the woods by herself for 200 years. So she is a very sociable person who is very unsocialized, and it's the best thing in the world to play. She wants to be friends with you, but she doesn't know how the world works. And it's been <laughs> so much fun. Uh, through the campaign, she, you know, befriended ogres and dragons and snuck behind all sorts of things and my favorite experience with her was we were going through the hollowed hills which is a, a rolling hill filled with mystical psychic mist that makes you go crazy and as we're leaving she hears the bereaved cries of a baby dragon and at this point, she can speak dragon. So without a second thought, she turns on her heels and runs towards this dragon cry, essentially falling down the hill, dragging her best friend with her who tried to save her from falling down the hill. <laughs> and then she gets to this cavern that has a magical blizzard storming inside of it. And this baby silver dragon is caged and she cares for none of that. She casts Flame Sphere to protect herself from the magical wiz blizzard, forces all of her friends to come in there and save this baby dragon. And I think we failed like four lockpick checks. I don't know how we survived. We almost died and then saved this baby dragon who she named Tanari brought to an arch druid who revived the dragon and then that dragon eventually saved them during a war later on uh so vari by far favorite character i love her so much she will forever and always be in my heart but i am you guys will know in a couple weeks we are starting a new campaign me and amanda are going to be part of that and our characters that we've created for this campaign are going to be pretty freaking cool so I'm so excited for her character. I'm so excited. Now, I'm going to go to Claire first because Claire has the most experience. Put you on the spot here. Who's your favorite character you've ever come up with? Epic three. Epic three. <laughs> Got it. Uh, so I, I, I have my original, uh, who's essentially now every class in 3.5. <laughs> only, only because they're so old. Mm-hmm. Hair that's fighting me. Uh, then, uh, well, there's one of my many variations of Dave the Bugbear that runs in one shots. Uh, Ozzy, it's a he's a bugbear, and all he does is run one shots. That's the best. You have your one shot <laughs> character. I like, love that. He's literally like twenty of my forty characters. <laughs> 
Uh, and then we have uh, Gilwin the Paladin, who broke the news to many a groups of me being transgender. Uh, so much so that my favorite role play was we said screw it to a campaign that day and went on a four hour shopping spree. Yep. Yep. I love my shopping sprees in D&D, especially when it uh, completely uh, derails the DMs. Oh, yeah. Whole plan. You're, you're, you're uh, at we're going shopping. Yeah, we're going shopping. We're going shopping, and this is what we're doing now. <laughs> and then I kept having my character do secret rendezvous with, like, some royalty. And it, oh, it was so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> I love that. It's, it was that... Um, was that really helpful? Like, was that really therapeutic to be able to work through a lot of coming out as transgender through your characters? That helped a lot. It, re it as weird as it is, it really did. Well, because you kind of get to do that um, in in D anD D, right? You kind of get to create whatever you want to. Yeah. Well, it's, it says you find yourself in your character. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really amazing that something as simple as D and D and creating a character and running it can be so. For me, it's helped me work through so many things, so many traumas, so many things that I've had to deal with. You know, it's it's you get to you get to be stronger than yourself, and then it yeah. helps you get through it, and that's huge. It's huge. So I am so happy that you are here. I am so happy that you are Claire. We are so happy to have you here. And I, I cannot tell you after Jesse, I'm sad Jesse has gone, but I'm so excited to see what you have up your sleeve. Cause everything <laughs> that you do just surprises me. <laughs> oh, it, 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 she's going to be great. <laughs> I, right. I don't, I don't think anybody in this server has seen this character type before. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. Because it, it does come from one of the books aloud. I made sure of it. There you go. That's all that matters. Run with it. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda, what's your favorite character and your favorite roleplay experience? Okay, my favorite character. Um, uh, that might be my... Um, I play the centaur fighter. Okay. That was... That was pretty fun. Um, I think that was in one of Ace's one shots, and like we were going through like this maze, and Dylan was observing in that one. Oh, that's um, the one where he was listening in. Yeah, and I I really enjoyed doing that. But like my favorite experience was when we did the um, the fairy steps one shot. I love that fairy one. Steps was my favorite like i absolutely love it and um i would love to see a continuation of it like maybe not that same campaign but even like a continuation of it because it was so cute and i remember like um me rasha maru and polo were just like ah! y'all were freaking out man and i have never <laughs> i was so embarrassed <laughs> Because we that entire thing, so I, hard. that was all him. I knew none of that was going to happen. I was just like, you just told me you wanted me to play the witch. You didn't. No, you go away. This, <laughs> no, you go away. Is it about you, Dylan? <laughs> For anybody it, that Dylan. missed the fairy steps, it was the true love story. Uh, of the century, a young prince was looking for the fairy godmother to transform his peasant love into a princess. Uh, and we had a whole thing planned. I was an NPC. I played the witch, and it was so much fun. And then out of nowhere, Dylan turns the peasant woman into me. And then we ended up getting married at the end of it. And everybody's like, kiss on stream, do it. And um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was so my face was so red by the end of it. But I, I think the best part about that one was everybody in the beginning like, yes, I yes, yes. Do you want to do you want to make the face? Mm -hmm. No, you, I already made my face. You want to make your face? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The best part about it was that a lot of the guys 
uh, starting out, we were just like, oh, it's a stupid love story. Oh, my God. And then by the end of it, it was Max going, oh, my God, we got to get to the forest. We only have an hour left. Oh, my God. And they all got That's into it. And they, they were so, oh, he was throwing people over his shoulder. And <laughs> it was so much fun. It was so cool. And that was all the role play. The role play took a mind of its own. That's the way it happens. It is so cool. I love that that was one of your favorite memories. That's so awesome. It was definitely one of my favorite memories. <laughs> that just every time I think about it, it just makes me smile. <laughs> I love that. Sydney, favorite character, favorite role play experience. Oh man, there's a lot. There are so many because I have four characters and like I love them all. Yep. <laughs> Trust me, you're gonna love them all because I have twenty yet, characters. Because she hasn't it. played in a campaign, that's gonna happen. Um, so I have Valerie who's a ranger, I have Evelyn who's an artificer. I have Rika, who's the uh, the rogue, and then I have uh, Alex, the shotgun gamble, who is a monk fighter, um, who's a boxer. Oh, that's super cool! So you and, kind of went all over the place with all your yeah. characters. I love that. Yes, and I kind of add like a special thing to each one of my characters. Like Valerie, she's uh, she has heterochromia, so she has one green eye and one blue eye. Oh, Evelyn's cool. albino. Rika has scars on her face from uh, the attack that kickstarted her adventuring. Um, so, like, I add something to each of my characters to try and like make each of them completely unique from the last. <clears throat> Sorry, choked on my air here. Uh, <laughs> completely from the last one, and um, so like, it's hard to pick a favorite when I try to make them so vastly different. But I do think I've come a lot farther with Rika than I have with all my other characters. Just because, like, I've kind of, like, m had a lot more experience at this point when I made Rika. I made her completely by myself. Each of my other characters, I had my DM help me because I had no idea what I was doing. So Rika was the first one that I've made by myself, leveled up by myself. I've done everything completely on my own, and I'm like, I'm proud of this. And her backstory is, like five pages of like i don't know if <laughs> any of you guys read the backstory for her but she has like an entire google doc that's like brown oh i love that i love that yeah don't get me started on backstory yeah. because i have way too much uh amanda Wait. knows i said yeah. way too many, <laughs> too many pages. What? what are backstory oh, I, didn't know reading it, though. <laughs> I know that claire needs to do some more learning on backstories and i have plans for that, since uh, apparently, unbeknownst to myself, I have become the backstory queen for some reason. Didn't know that that was a thing. Uh, but I feel like this tavern talk has been so cool. We need a girls D and D campaign. Uh, so that what has to happen. I'll tell you which one we're playing. Woo! I want. Yes. Where's the Where's the white dice, babe? I know it's around here somewhere. Where's your? I've got a D eight right here. Ah, no, I need four. to. I only have. I only D6. have six notebooks right now. I got roll it. A D, roll a d seven. I don't have. Where's your d six? You want mine? Yes. I rolled a four. She rolled okay. a four. Never mind. <laughs> so we definitely need to have that, and I think that all of us uh, girls that have not DM'd need to take a shot. At DMing, I will try. Ooh. I will try. <laughs> no promises made here. We should just like start oh, small can... and like DM a one shot or something <laughs> like that. Actually, it's better to start with a campaign, surprisingly. Fair enough. I would like to start I, I can, with like a one find... shot that turns into a campaign. I, I think that'd like, be cool. Like, should, it, like it, if it's... someone or like if you guys like decide like you don't like it, then it's like, okay, cool. At least we ended it in a good place. But if you're like, yeah, let's keep going. I want to see the rest of the world. It's like, okay, well, there's like a bunch, like an entire world we can explore. Like that would be a nice way to start it. Like, so it's campaign feel, but in a one shot. If you want a good one, look up the minds of Flemdelver. Ooh, I, 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 I refuse to play that one correctly. <laughs> 
That is a good uh, question that will round off the stream because I know Sydney has to go soon. So I want to make sure that she can make where she's got to go. Um, Thank you. but it says, how important is it, is an extensive backstory to creating a fully fleshed out character? Do you think a character with a two paragraph backstory can be as fulfilling to play as a character with a 20 page epic? Um, and honestly, for me personally, I don't think it's the length of your backstory. Um, I find that it's really helpful for the DM if you include, uh, your own backstory characters, like uh, family members, friends, people you've come into contact with, and that helps the DM include your backstory um, into the campaign. But I also, and something that I've loved about doing all these one shots, because it is very like our way of doing D&D &D is very different than I've seen a lot of people do. Um, the fact that we have this guild, that that is the main focus, that is what puts us all together is this guild. Uh, but we're all doing different adventures. So you're essentially building your own backstory because you are in a one shot and then you come back and you see another person that you were just on adventuring with. Y'all now have history. You now have your own backstory. And a lot of my ideas for my character, I've come up with halfway into a campaign. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this makes perfect sense. And I'll talk to my DM about it. Now, I go a little overboard with all of my <laughs> backstories. Uh, and if you have a DM that's willing to work with you about their world and about uh, what you're building into, that's also super great. Uh, I've had pretty exceptional DMs, you know, working with Dylan, who is very receptive to character backstory and growth and then working with Anakin on his world who his world is completely fleshed out because he's literally ran this campaign, he told us like four times. So mm -hmm. he's now running it again with us and it's so much more fleshed out than it ever was for the rest of his things. So, you know, I don't think you need to have a crazy backstory. I think it can be as simple as your character wanted to go on an adventure, so they did. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you have your parents in there, your friends, what happened when they grew up, that kind of thing. It helps build something for the DM to include. Because I love when my character has its own session, you know, like we have a side quest because I met a friend from long ago and we have to go save them or something like that. I think it's super cool that DMs can do that. Uh, I definitely plan on having some big uh, backstory voice chat helping times. I think that would be so much fun. Uh, so even fun. me and Mando were just talking back and forth the other day, like sh swapping backstories back and forth, doing it together. Um, but I want to thank you guys all for making time to be here. I'm so excited that we have ladies night. We will be back with ladies night in a couple weeks. Next week, we are still doing community talk, even though Dylan and I are going on vacation. Um, so, uh, Sunday is still on. Uh, but this has been awesome. I want to thank all of you ladies for sharing your experiences. Claire, I want to give a huge round of applause for you, for your strength, uh, and for being open and letting us in. I think that's been amazing. We love having you guys all here. Um, and thank you for chat, for being here, uh, and asking your questions. The questions definitely help. I'm really excited to see what happens. Big June event coming up. Don't forget, guys, June events coming up soon. High level one shots. There will be an announcement made soon. So get your high level characters ready. Get ready for some really tough battles. Uh, I'm really excited to see what we come up with and see, make sure that you guys uh, have a lot of fun. Uh, and check out the shop when you have a chance. We've got some really cool things in there. Um, and I'm really excited. So thank you guys. Thank you, chat. And subscribe. Hit the like button. I don't know what we're doing. If Welcome that's a Twitch, thing. Just hit the follow, follow button us. right now. Yeah, follow <laughs> us. Hit the heart because we're all about love here. Yes. That's my Join girl. our Discord. And check out our Discord. We will be back next week. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the stream is done. Thank you so